came back. <laughs> okay, just rem <laughs> remind you guys, this is the third method that we're going to use to solve this class of problems in electromagnetism. So the main concept that you have to learn here to understand Gauss law is the concept of flux. Flux is nothing less than a scalar quantity that quantifies how much a certain physical quantity. In our case, we represented this physical quantity by a vector field and how much of this physical quantity flows through a given area. As you can see here, right, you, you remember from what you learned before that the, the field vector, right, is, tan is tangential to the field lines. The field lines are represented in blue here and then you have the, the, the vector itself represented in orange and you have this a given area in, in green and this normal vector in um, purple. How you represent this mathematically, guys? Mathematically speaking, this is just the the, the scalar product between between the vector field and the area that this vector field goes through. That's very easy, right? You know this. I don't know from our calculus classes that if you are interested in the flux, mathematically speaking, the flux is represented. The flux is represented by the scalar product between the field. In this case, I'm saying calling this field F, this vector field F, and the scalar or dot product with the area. You can rewrite these, of course, right? Since uh, if you are interested in these infinitesimal parts, you can you can actually write this as F color product is A and write this here normal vector as no element of but let's look a little bit what this represents right what this uh, scalar product represent we are very used um, of doing this kind of operations when you did like a vectorial calculus right since let's consider if you consider like two vectors here like a vector a and this a vector b arbitrary vectors here you know that for example we know that this scalar product here is just the summation of all its components, right? From one to three, the a sub i, i. Honest. This is the the Cartesian way of doing this. And we also know what this represents like geometrically, right? We know what this represents geometrically color product between two vectors represent like the projection that's put red and you have this vector vector two vector a and you are interested in actually geometrically speaking in this projection here, right, guys? Really, really interested. Color product is actually the magnitude of this vector B, A, sorry, uh, multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the vectors B here, right? Here. And then we can write this color product too as. Just a reminder, so all did calculus, vectorial calculus right before, so this A, magnitude of the vector A, 
by the magnitude of vector B and this multiply the cosine the angle between the the two the two vectors and we are going to use this a lot in symmetrical the scalar product to understand uh, the the electrical flux okay let's go back a little bit and understand what what does it mean right the electrical flux we need some kind of analogy to understand what 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 exactly this scalar product represents for that i'm going to show you a video here guys let's go and i'm going to this video for you guys can you see can you guys see this video so you have the the field here in this case i'm using e it's a just a coincidence like the electrical field and the area is represented in red here as you can see my friends right uh, the larger the area the more field lines go through right this area and then of course the greater the flux uh, of course I can I, I didn't show here in this video this video doesn't have this part but if you have like a stronger electric field that means you have more field lines right then you have greater greater the flux as well also for my friends if you, if wait a little bit oh this okay this one if the area right that you are analyzing if this area rotates so that the plan is actually if the plan is aligned with the electrical field as you can see the there is no flux and then increases to have a maximum in in in, in zero degree oh. back here okay and did you understand here my friends we can actually write now instead of uh, writing the flux for any given any arbitrary vector field you can write this for for the electric field this is going to be exactly the same the only difference here is that we use the letter the greek letter the capital greek letter e to represent the flux and this is going to be represented by this scalar product the electrical field and the electric the next page Let's analyze a little bit this expression and also guys in the class notes I I'm going to put some some simulations for you too uh, where is my simulation I put this simulation for you too and if you if you wanna what is this forever oh this one you cannot vary the the area here the area but you can see how let's start here you can see how this the flux is affected if you rotate this area as you can see when i rotate if the if the area if the normal right of this area has the same direction like like the the, the field you have the maximum flux as this rotates the flux is going to decrease 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 until you reach 90 degrees that means that the normal vector of this surface and the and the field direction they have they form like 90 degrees so you have no flux and this is a very important concept to solve like uh, many of the problems that are, we are going to face in the book the textbook okay but i i left this in the, the, the lecture notes you can play a little bit that and just to finish this part guys if it's if it's still if this concept right of a uh, electric flux flux in general right the, the concept of flux is is difficult to understand in this perspective purely mathematical we, you you can imagine for example if you have like a hula loop right if you have a hula loop 
and you put this hula loop inside the river you, and you are analyzing uh, the flow of water that is going through the hula loop look of course the, the flux or the flow that you are analyzing is going to be bigger the bigger is the the hula loop right the bigger is the flux that go through this hula loop if you put this in angle it's going to change change also the the, the flux if it's completely if, if the normal of this if, if the plane of the hula hoop is uh, is completely perpendicular to the flow right that means that this vector here is has the same direction like the the field so you have the maximum flux going through this this area and of course when you rotate this is going to decrease 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 until you have for example you have the string here right and the hula hoop is in the same it's parallel and then nothing goes through so th this is uh, i think is a very good like macroscopic analogy to understand the, this concept of flux this concept of flux is going to be crucial to understand the gauss law so the first thing that we have to understand here is this uh, concept let's go then this being said let's go to the next page let's see here okay i put some definitions here my guys like you say and first of all let's again let's emphasize right that the electric flux is a scalar quantity that means it is a number you just you just have to set it up that's it all you have to do if you have for example very complex surfaces right and you you wanted to know what is the flux through those surfaces you analyze you can analyze like a simple parts of the, the the total surface and divide many small smaller parts and analyze and then just add it up at the end another important comment that you have to do here is that the units right since this is a scalar quantity this the units of the electric flux is newton square meters per coulomb also it's very common to represent that if uh, the electric flux as volts per meters and let's analyze here what happens right when you have for example you have one electrical field e here and you have the area here represented in yellow that has an angle of zero degree related to the electrical field uh, from from what you learned before right on the expression from from the geometrical expression of this color product we can write this infinity i'm i'm analyzing only for this element here right for this in, no, element here Uh, this infinitesimal flux through that infinitesimal element of area this is going to be the magnitude of this vector field the electrical field in this case multiply by the cosine the angle between them multiply the element of area okay this guy here you have the normal is here I didn't put the normal let's put some this is n normal vector okay What I have here is supposed to be back. This the, um, we plug in you substitute here cosine of zero degrees.
this one the cosine of uh, zero degrees is one so that means that this the flux for this case is going to be just the product of these two the electrical field strength times this element of area you just have to integrate to calculate over the whole of this whole surface and this is a case where you have actually the maximum flux so mathematic mathematically we can prove improve when you if you have the flow if you have the field in this direction and then if you have the surface forming with the normal forming the, the normal here parallel right to the field this is maximum have the maximum flux oh my god my my drawings are right to make or later this is one. and for the second case we have the normal vector here the normal vector is making 90 degree angle field Ninety degrees. That means that those vectors are perpendicular. In this case, copy here, right? Here. Okay. This one is ninety degrees. So that is zero. In this case, the flux here is going to be our uh, like parallel to lines. Oh, and then of course, consequence. This is going to be. Zero. Equalize that. We have zero flux. Need to say anything else here? Okay, let's go. So you understand here. So uh, this concept of electric of electric flux. I hope so, because it's kind of uh, not so complicated. Very easy to. This one is a concept that we can actually visualize easily okay and and let's go to another let's generalize this this concept for closed surfaces for closed surfaces guys we can use the same right doesn't matter always the same you just analyze piece by piece right you just analyze like individual parts of the total volume that you're analyzing and you can calculate the flux the same way flux is always calculated the same way you just have to calculate the the scalar product the electrical field and each individual elements of uh, infinitesimal elements of area this closed surface you can actually choose this surface here any way you wanna you can make your life easier you can make your life or uh, complicated when you choose this surface uh, <laughs> these surfaces and the, the guy who had this idea was Gao who was a brilliant brilliant mathematician and eventually from time to time he used to to do some work in physics too he was a genius since he was a kid actually had all you guys heard many stories about Gauss when he was like seven years old or so on when 
was in elementary school, he was already recognized as a genius. And we all learned many things from <laughs> that actually it was God that uh, developed. Okay, let's go back here to our concepts of electric flux. Uh, what you have to know for these kind of surfaces right now we are when you are dealing with closed surfaces not easy case like this one this one is very easy and right have like an open surface is very easy to calculate the flux here you have to be a little bit more careful first uh, first thing since you have a closed surface we have to to define if you have we have two two directions that the, the field can come when you have a closed surface, right? The field can be piercing this sur surface from outside to inside, or can can be the opposite. The, the flux can be piercing the surfaces from from inside to outside. In this case, you have to be careful. It's the only thing that you have to be careful here is actually this, this is by convention, right? If you have the flux right, piercing surfaces from outside to inside we consider this the flux to be negative so here in the drawing number one yeah this one okay, you have this surface here side of the surface if you have the the field piercing from outside to inside so the flux is considered negative let Stress this here, cha, cha, cha. Yeah. opposite. On the other hand, if you have the the field, right? In this case, the electrical field piercing from inside to outside. In this case, we have we consider that the flux is positive. And if if the the electric field is parallel. To this element of area right that means that the normal the normal vector of this element of area the normal vector is not here let me put here let's imagine that this is the normal vector of this element of area if this is has 90 degrees forms like 90 degrees with the direction of the left field so this choo -choo 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 -choo, this is considered zero flux in English they say scheme I don't know why. I don't know. I don't even know how to pronounce that yet. I think it's a scheme. So the where are the our <laughs> our guys from England and from the United States? I think uh, scheme like scheme. Matter the, that means that the normal vector is perpendicular to the direction of the of the electrical field. Okay, guys. So you have these three things that uh, we have to aware of let me see you have one minute i'm going to call you guys now again okay i'm going to stop for a little while i'm going to call you again